Hi everybody, this is Richard. I'm here to talk about binary language today. Before we get into programming Dart language itself, I want to get into the basics, just the overview, just so that we know what we are actually doing, because I think it just gives us a better understanding itself. If we remember what I said last time, computers speak in a binary language, ones and zeros. The transistors, the electricity flows from one side to the next, or it doesn't. All or nothing, one or a zero. And that's how what computers see, which is very different from how we see the world itself. So that's why it's, it's a nice idea to just get the basics and so we can have a little bit of understanding of programming in and of itself. Integers or numbers are actually counted a little bit differently from characters that we have. So in the binary world with computers, they, the computers can see a one and a zero. We can see 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and we could see A through Z, and we got all these bunch of other characters, the exclamation point, the parentheses, the, you know, this and that, whatever you want to throw inside there. So how does the computer actually understand this? Well, let's go over integers first. We use something called, we meaning people, use something called base 10 numbers. So we have 0 through 9, that's 10. Um, then we have each of these characters, then it stands for, there's the ones place, then there's the tens place, then the hundreds place. Do you remember this from, I think it's second grade or something like that? Because I don't, actually don't remember this at all. I had to review this. Then the thousands place. So you get each one of these places, the ones place, you multiply it by 10, you get the tens place. Multiply 10, you get a hundreds place, multiply by 10, because we're base 10. That's what we actually do, okay? So one zero stands for 10, one zero zero stands for 100, 10 times 100, 10 times, you know, 10, 100 times 10. So this is the 1, 0, 0, 0 is 1,000. Okay, I hope this is making sense. Now we have all these characters behind it. When you have base 2, all you have is 0 and 1. That's all you have. So the next place, 1, 0, that's not the 10's place. That's the 2's place, right? So 1, 1 times 2 equals 2. And let's see here, one, one times one's place, one times two equals two, two times two equals four, four times four equals eight, eight times, eight, eight times two equals 16. So we, we count numbers a little bit differently. So the one here is stands for two. Let's just put, put it this way. One, one equals one, one zero equals two, one zero zero equals 2 times 2, 4, whoops, 1, 0, 0, 0, equals 2 times 4, equals 8. All right, so if you look at these numbers right here, it, for a computer, 1, 0 is not 10. Again, that's base 10. 1, 0 equals 0 in the 1's place, 2, whoops, I just, what did I just do right here? All right. That would equal 2. 1, 0 is 2 plus 1 equals 3. So 1, 1 is the best representation of 3 in binary. So 1, 0, 0. So 1, 0, that's the 4's place, right? Not the 100's place, the 4's place, because we're base 2. 4 plus 0 plus 0 equals 4. So 1, 0, 0 equals 4 in binary. 4 plus 0 plus 1 equals 5. So that's a representation of 5. So let's just say, for example, what is 1, 1, 0, 1, 1? Okay, what does that equal? Well, that equals to the, that's the 1's place, 1, plus, that's the 2's place, 2, plus, that's the 4's place, 0, and that's the 8's place, plus 8. And that's the 16's place. 2 times 8 is 16. So that's the 16's place. So that number is um, 8 plus 2 is 10, 26, 27. That equals 27. So that's how we count binary, and that's how a computer sees it itself. So there's no other twos, threes, fours. This is base 10 for us, base 10, and base 2, because there's only ones place, twos place, 
one's place, two's place, four's place, eight's place. All right, so I hope that's a little bit clear. It might be a little bit confusing. If you have any questions, feel free to put it in the comments, or if I did a really bad job of explaining that, I'm really, really sorry about that. Then we have decimals, okay? How do you represent a decimal? Well, when you think how we represent a decimal, what we're actually doing is one plus one over 10 plus one over 100 plus one over a thousand. Okay, what does this mean? Okay, 0 0.1.11. That's one tenth, right? Tens place. 11 one hundredths, right? That's the, the 11th place. 111 one thousandths. So if you have zero, zero, what you're actually doing is one one thousandths, because that's the thousandths place, right? So, again, let's think of this in terms of binary itself. If you have binary, what you have is 0 plus 2's place, so 1 over 2, plus okay, 1 over 4, right, plus 1 over 8, and you keep going on that way itself. So, so that's how you represent in the binary in base 2 systems. So it's kind of interesting. So how would you represent like 0 0.5? That equals 0 0.1, right? So 1 divided by 2 equals 0.5. How would you represent 0 0.25 in base 10, so 2 tenths plus 5 one hundredths, right? How would you represent that here in binary? Well, you would put 0. Point, it wouldn't be a half because a half is too much. 0 plus a quarter, so one quarter, put a 1 right there. So 0 0.01 equals 0 0.25 in binary. So it makes it nice and easy. Now, what's the significance of this? Well, the significance of this is there are some characters that we cannot just obviously translate from base 10 to base 2 or vice versa. For example, um, one third, okay? One third. In base 10, it's 0 0.333 repeating, right? Dot, dot, dot. Um, in binary, it's, I had to look this up, okay, just for the record, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, that's not right. One. Zero one. This is how they actually represent it in, in binary itself. So when you think about, you can't one third accurately represent that in either base 10, because point, it's not point 0.3, it's point 0.3 repeating, right? So if you're trying to split a pizza among three friends, you can never accurately, you know, sort it out. So one guy is always going to get a little screwed there, right? And the other guy is going to get a little bit more because you can't be actually perfect. Minus the cutting error, of course, that, that, that too. But you can't actually get perfect in binary either. So if you want to represent the truest value of one third, all you can get is an approximation. And, and that's important because that, that's the difference in, um, in, in these characters. So this whole numbers are called integers. Decimals are called floating point floating points. And the significance of that is it's a little bit different. The amount of characters, the farther out you go, so for example, 0.3 as to representing one third is, you know, close. If you're splitting a pizza among three people, it's probably close enough. You know, someone's going to get 0.4, but it's not a real big deal, close enough. But if you're like sending somebody to the moon or something like that, 0.3 is probably not going to be enough. And if you're off by 0 0.033333, you might end up sending them to an asteroid instead of the moon. Um, and, and that's an important concept to keep in mind. So floating point, the amount of accuracy, the number of digits you go out is called single precision, double precision, and it goes out to triple and quadruple. Um, Dart actually uses double precision. 
does you don't have to really know this, but in, in the future we'll understand that some of the terminology why it makes a little bit more sense. They call things doubles, but that's where that actually comes from. So that's that's the representation of numbers. Integers, floating points. Okay, I think I hope that Next we talk about strings. Okay, string is basically a text. So it's basically what is how a computer appreciates text. So we're talk not talking about numbers anymore. We're talking more about letters themselves. How do you get a letter represented in a number? Well, what they basically did was they said, okay, we have one bit, a one or a zero. Those are the possible states of a bit, either one or a zero. If we string together eight of them, you will have about 256 possible character, possible conditions themselves, right? Right. So one, um, l l let, me, let me count this out here. One plus two plus four plus eight plus 16 plus 32 plus 64. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, plus 128. So, 100 and, uh, so, so one plus two equals three. Plus four equals, well, you add it all together and it gets 256. Okay, you're going to have to trust me on that one. So we add those all together and it gets 256 possibilities. And the, the creators of the binary language said 256 characters is enough to, en to encompass all the numbers, 0 through 9, because that's really all you basically need, right? Um, 0 through 9 all the letters, lowercase capitals, and as well as all the special characters. Now, fortunately, they weren't Chinese, so they can't, they didn't cover, you know, I don't know how many characters are in the Chinese language, like th tens of thousands, right? So, so it doesn't cover all those, it just color, it, it's very English-centric language itself. So it covers all those. So that's why you get eight bits to a byte. So... When you talk about a byte, a byte is the representation of characters because of, of this, it, because it has 256 states. Now, what does that actually mean? When you get a, or when you have a number, I'm sorry, a, a letter, when you have a letter, you have to pass it along as a string of, literally, a string of numbers, ones and zeros. So. For example, my daughter's name is Hannah, and um, the, how the computer sees it is 01001000. Okay. So that's how a computer actually sees it. So when you look at it itself, the A and A, so the A here and the A here is identical because this character stands for the letter A. So anytime this passes through the transistor, all of these off on, it's kind of like Morse code, off 01100001, then it says, oh, that's the, the letter A. Um, and so you notice two ends in the very beginning, very middle, excuse me, these characters should be identical, assuming I type them right. These characters are identical because they're both N. But notice the H, capital H, is different from lowercase h because they are different characters. The computer doesn't see them as similarities at all. We read them and it, eh, it's close enough. Sometimes I capitalize, sometimes I don't. The computer sees them as completely and utterly different, different characters. That's why capitalization makes a big, huge difference um, in, most, in many programming languages, not all. But that's something to keep in mind. So this is basically the basics of um, the binary language. I hope it makes sense. Next, we'll jump into Dart itself.